All right, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the tricks and traps of the first of the independent speaking tasks. This is the one about the personal experience. So as I stated here, unlike the reading and the listening sections, the speaking section does not have a lot of tricks. Um, in other words, there aren't a lot of things that the makers of the exam do to try to trick you you know, to find out your level of comprehension and to make sure that your English level is high enough. So the speaking section is not really about the tricks, but there are a few traps that you can fall into. Now, as far as the traps for this particular speaking task, this first one is kind of true for all of them, but specifically for this first task, the main trap that you need to avoid is not giving sufficient reasons and or examples to support your response. Now, if you'll remember, it specifically says in the directions to give reasons and examples to support your response, or it will use a synonym of those words. And so not giving more than one reason or not giving more than one example uh, could be something that would cause you to have a lower grade for this particular task. Now, I mentioned before that you might only have one reason to support your response, and so then you would have to give more examples or more detail about that. Or, you know, maybe you only have one example, so you give a little bit more detail about that example. The most important thing is that if you were giving this response to someone in a normal conversation, you should never leave them wondering the question, why? Or, you know, what for? If you're giving some some information about something. Like if you were talking about your best friend and you said, um, this person is my best friend because he's really cool. Okay, why? What makes him cool? What, um, you know, give me some examples. Give me some reasons why. So you should never let them wonder the question why. That's really the most important thing that you have to think about when you're practicing this is to give full answers that would never leave someone wondering why for any part of your response. So the other one, not pro properly fulfilling the task. Now, th the main thing is that this ties into reasons and examples. If you don't follow that part of the directions, then you're not fulfilling the task. But there are other ways that you could not fulfill the task. Um, giving an unrelated response. Perhaps they asked you to speak about some custom or tradition, and you ended up talking about your favorite pastime. Now, maybe that pastime was in relation to a custom or a tradition, but if you forgot to make that distinction, and it's not clear to the person who is listening to your response, then th and then they would say that the task was unfulfilled or it was not fulfilled properly. Um, if your answer does not make sense, like if you have poor sentence structure, or if your pronunciation is so horrible that the person really just does not understand you, then that's something you will definitely get graded down for. Um, not developing your response. This ties into giving reasons and examples or, um, you know, telling the reasons why you give some sort of information. And also by simply just listing information, that's not going to be fulfilling the task properly because it's not developing a full response. So if you said, um, describe your favorite pastime, if that was the task, and you just said, oh, I like reading books, I like watching movies, my favorite movie is, um, is Dune, uh, and I think that the action movies nowadays are really stupid, and I don't really like Spider-Man very much, but Spider-Man was pretty cool in the, in the Avengers movies, but, uh, you know, if you're just listing off information like that, it's not linked together, it's not tied to anything specifically, if it's not related to the, the task that you have to do, then you're going to definitely get graded down. You still won't get a zero, um, you'll get something just for speaking, but you won't get a very good score on that one. So those those are the other things that you have to pay attention to. Not properly fulfilling the task means not, you know, um, not giving a full response, maybe talking about something unrelated or just simply listing information. Uh, the next one is finishing your response too early. This one's pretty simple. If you have more than three seconds of blank, as we say, airtime, after your response, before the recording ends, like it just stops and you have a blank spot like that. That was pretty much only like three seconds. I actually wasn't counting. But even that much time will be enough that they will grade you down. The other thing is if you're giving your response and the recording stops before you finish the sentence or before you finish your full answer, 
then you will definitely be graded down on that as well. That's why I mentioned in the in the strategy that you definitely should practice with a clock. That way you know how much information you can get in in the 45 seconds. You know how much information you should not try to fit into your answer. And, um, you know, you'll understand about how fast you should be able, uh, how fast you should be speaking to get that perfect amount of time. So it still sounds natural to you. So not finishing your response in time, finishing your response too early, not properly fulfilling the task and not giving uh, the reasons or examples, in other words, not following the directions. These are the main traps that you should look out for and be aware of. This, these are the things that would cause you to get a lower score on this task. As far as the tricks, I mentioned there really aren't any tricks. Um, that's true with every every task in the, the speaking section. So um, we will focus more on the traps, but in the next lesson, we're going to be talking about the master skills for this particular task type. And um, that's where we get into the things that you can do to make sure that you always have a very good response, no matter what they ask you. So we'll uh, see you in that next lesson. Thank you for stopping by and have an excellent day.